Hey everyone, it's Tuesday. I am Gina and I'm in the studio and excited that you're here with me for another little open studio conversation. Uh, I started doing these for a couple reasons. One is I wanted to just kind of be more transparent and open with how I, how I pursue my practice as an artist, but I also I just wanted to make it accessible to you and I also wanted to provide some encouragement or inspiration at, whether you're an artist or you're not and so it's been really fun to connect with you as we've gone along and uh, if you joined me last week you remember that we talked about this concept of scarcity or abundance and you know what camp where are you living and place of scarcity or in a place of abundance and I kind of want to continue on in that theme again today uh, but I want to specifically look at what's helped me be more free and abundant in terms of my art supplies and at my actual art practice so if you're not an artist um, this might not specifically apply to you that's totally fine but I think you'll find something encouraging anyway in it um, but if you are an artist hopefully these tips and tricks will just kind of open things up for you maybe um, to be more free with your supplies to paint with more abundance because I can remember when I first started being uh, a little I don't know hesitant about purchasing paint it felt expensive I didn't know what I wanted um, and because it felt expensive and I wasn't even sure what kind of paint I wanted, I would often use a little bit of a paint and it just never produced that great of a painting because I was skimpy with the paint. So this is the first um, hack or you know way to kind of trick the system if you're feeling like, I can't be abundant in my supplies because I have you know limited resources or just a little bit, I can't buy every tube of paint. You don't have to buy every tube of paint. You really don't. Um, let me show you how I started years ago when I first started creating art. I started with the sample paints from the hardware store. These are great. They're super cheap and in fact I still use them in my practice all the time because they're just great paint extenders. Um, so what I did at first was I would get colors mixed up because you can you know go look through the paint colors and pick whatever you want they'll mix it in a sample and so uh, what I would do is just get kind of a light and a dark of almost every color reds yellows oranges and and some white and some black and with that kind of Roy G Biv I was able to create a lot of great paintings um, so this is a great way to start. And these little pots are fantastic. They're easy to use, they're, they're abundant. You know, if you get something you really like, you can easily go get more. Check the oops section. You know, there's always, at least in our hardware store, a couple gallons of mist tints or whatever. And, and those are great to just play around with, um, to play around with or to, um, you know, create a painting with. And I did use these quite a bit. So this is kind of tip number one. I can be more abundant with what I'm creating if I don't feel like the paint is so precious. If I don't feel like I have to scrimp it, you know, scrimp and save to make it last for a painting, I can just dump this out and use it, you know, and it's three bucks to get another one. So this is, this is, this is great because it's just paint, you know. I think when we feel like things are so precious or costly, it's we want to hold on to them more, right? Because they're precious, and so I, I don't want to feel so precious about my supplies. I want to use them all up. So this is a great way for me to do that. So that's number one tip: is to use the hardware store paints. Um, I will say a note on these is that they don't mix well. So you know, if you were to take just a red and a yellow and you, you might, you'll get orange, but you might not get like a vibrant, pure orange, maybe a little more of a muddy orange, which is fine if that's what you want, but that's just something to keep in mind. Eventually you're gonna want to pick up some tubes of paint. So this brings me to my second thing that helps me to be more abundant, to be more generous and kind of go through my supplies is, um, so I buy tubes of paint and I like to buy the heavy body and I am not picky about brand. I've used Golden, Liquitex, 
whatever I can find, I've tried. Some I don't like, some I do. Some I really don't care, I've used either. Um, the Artist Loft line from Michaels, it's the professional level, level three. Um, these are really great as well. Um, and they're not, they do with sales and so they're easy to get. But what I do with these is I take them from the tube and I put them directly into my squeeze bottle. So I'll take a whole tube, put them in my squeeze bottle. These are just condiment bottles. You can get them at like a grocery supply store or you can order them online. I'll empty out the tube of paint in here and I'll add water and shake, shake, shake. And I'll shake up enough to um, make it kind of um, not as thick as the heavy body, but a little more loose. It's easier to spread. So you can see it's, you know, it's, it's nice. So I use those a lot and, um, and that's been really helpful for me to, uh, to make the paint last. There goes one of my kids, um, is to use that. And so now that I know which colors I use more specifically, I tend to buy them in bigger tubs and you can get, I uh, like the golden brand, you can get them in, um, I'll show you. <clears throat> you can get them in big 16 ounce tubs. And so I just use a palette knife and plop it in and I don't have a recipe. I just, enough water to make it go is what I use. So I often will cut the top off to make it come out easier, but yeah, so that's, that takes one tube of paint or a one thing of paint and makes it last quite a bit longer because I'm mixing it with water. And so that's another great way I kind of game the system to make, make my paint last. And it works really well. The more you paint, the more you'll figure out what colors you want. You might even like make your own mixes. Um, so the other thing concerning paint is, you know, you need a surface to put your paint on. And so this is what I use, and I love this because it does help me to use paint more. I use, it's called a Stay Wet palette. You could do this with a tray, like a TV tray. I learned this trick from Nicholas Wilton. The Stay Wet palette, they do sell pads, like sponges, that fit right in here, and then palette paper, which work really good. They're kind of spendy, and if you paint a lot, you're going to need the palette paper quite a bit. So to make it easier for me, I take um, shop towels and I will just roll out like four or five and fold them so they sit right in there. You know, three, four, five of them. I get them nice and wet. I just kind of usually pour water from my water bucket right in there. And then I take a piece of um, parchment paper. I don't love this because it kind of peels, curls up sometimes, but the parchment paper I've got it already cut to fit and it goes just right on top. So the paper towels are wet, parchment tape paper I can toss, super cheap. When I'm done painting, I can cover it with a lid and seal it so that the paint stays fresh. So if my if I'm not, you know, making too much of a mess on the palette, these will last me, I could keep the paint a week being fresh. Sometimes I'll spritz it with water before I close it up. It's been open for a while, but that's another great way for me to feel like I can use the paint generously. If I mix up something I love, I can preserve it and use it the next time I'm painting. So that's been a real helpful thing for me to feel generous um, and not so precious, you know, is to to use this. And, and I think I just, I'm gonna leave you with this third thought of concerning abundance and painting with generosity is the thought that it's not precious. You're gonna create paintings if you're just learning. You're gonna create some really great ones. You're gonna create some ones that are just not. And so I would tell you, just don't be afraid to toss it. If you find a color you hate, don't be afraid to toss it. Use what you love. If you create something you hate, dump it, paint over it. Like let's not be so precious with what we're doing and be open-handed. You know, it's you're gonna create something again. And you might say, well, what if I like this little corner? You liked it, you made it once, you can make it again. It's part of the learning process. So don't be afraid to get rid of it and move things on, make room for the next um, the next thing. So hopefully those are helpful to you and encouraging. And um, let me know if you have questions. Um, 
I have lots of thoughts if you're getting started on, you know, which colors you should get if you're buying the tubes of paint. Um, you know, there's just so much. So let me know if you have questions and thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.